If you're in the market for a used RV or camper van, listen up because we are sharing all of the things that you need to check for before making a purchase. We've been on the road for four years in two self-built vehicles and have toured hundreds of tiny homes on wheels. But now that our lives are changing with a baby on the way, we've had to make some big moves. Not for sale anymore. She's sold! Let's go shopping for a classic RV that's gonna become a home. I wouldn't even feel comfortable test driving it right now. This is pretty comfy up here. What happens when your belly's really big? That's how it gets 20 to 22 a gallon. All these old RVs are going to have a good. lot of pros and cons. Follow our tips and your adventures will be F and A. Let's go. Good morning, beautiful people. You're probably wondering why we're what? sitting in this vehicle when it's sold already. The guy who bought it is nice enough to allow us to drive it around to try to find a new RV. Our very old, new to us RV. <laughs> Ranging from $7,000 to $15,000. Hopefully by the end of today, we will have made a decision on which of these five lucky RVs gets to become f and a. Woo! We need some fuel for this fire, so let's go. Now it's time to head back to 1985. When you're touring something like this 1985 Nissan Sun Raider, you're gonna first wanna do a full check of the exterior of the vehicle, looking not only at the walls and windows, but also the underbody and the roof. You're checking for possible leaks, cracks, damage, rust, or shoddy repair jobs. Then we're gonna head to the interior of the vehicle. You're looking for how it's maintained on the inside, how well it's built. My general rule is the messier the inside of the van is, potentially the less the owner cared about maintaining the vehicle properly. What do you guys think? <laughs> and always turn the engine over on a cold start to make sure it starts easily. We've seen number one, now we're on our way to number two, which is gonna be a little bit bigger and four years newer. Wow. Up in there, good boy. Luckily, everything's about a 10 minute drive away. I think I'm concussed. I tried to get out of the, I like sat in the front seat and then I got out and the way that it is, the hood of the cab is right there. So I literally stood up right into the hood of the cab and like, did not feel good. The pros of that vehicle are obviously the price and he's flexible on price so we could even get him down further from seven. There's so much come up value on it. We'd have to rip the whole inside out. It's a big project, but the bones are pretty good. The biggest con is that it needs some mechanical work right now. He said, I wouldn't recommend driving it over 25 miles an hour. I wouldn't even feel comfortable test driving it right now. That's right. the reason why I didn't ask him if I could take it for a swing around the block. But we're going to see my favorite rig in the sense of aerodynamics. This 1988 Winnebago Lasharo is beautiful from the outside. Whoa. Look at that. The wind goes right up and then watch me. Right around. But when you get inside, you need to start thinking about the layout of the build. Does this work for your needs? Are you a weekend camper or are you a full-time van lifer? This rig had hardly any storage at all, and the way that the shower and toilet was set up right in the middle of the camper was a little bit awkward and not what we would have chosen. There's also the question of headspace. I'm only five foot two, so this is definitely a short camper. When you do start that engine up, you're gonna wanna open your ears and listen for any interesting noises. Yeah, that's, that's AC. That's AC. Yeah. You still need some work, but hey. Now it's time for the test drive. You can get a full list of things to look for when going for this test drive. But listen for clunking noises, any kind of shifting problems, alignment, and then of course you're gonna wanna think about fuel mileage. And that's how it gets 20 to 22 a gallon, for sure. Not only was that rig sweet for its aerodynamics, but 33,000 miles, which is crazy, original miles. It's been basically garage kept most of its life, and like there's a little cosmetic stuff we'll have to do on the outside and inside. But I think this one has the most potential so far. And the test drive was really good as well. My concern would be the inside is so like pinned up and clean and whatever. Can we replace the walls? Everything feels very like exactly where it is. So it feels like almost that it would be harder to like 
give it a whole new layout. All right, so this is the most expensive rig of the day. It's $15,000 and it looks like it's already been renovated. We might not have as much upside on this one, but it would be easy to just move into and live. Before you do any shopping, you're gonna wanna think about your budget. This is definitely maxing out ours, but there's usually some wiggle room in negotiations. Start to test all of the systems within the vehicle, the batteries, the refrigerator, the plumbing. If they don't work, you could probably get a discount. This one's really cute. It's already been redone too, so it's like, it's kind of nice. We're gonna put more miles on it though, so like the selling point of it is kind of hard, and the sense of price point. So that's the one thing that I'm thinking about. It would probably be harder to flip this one for more money. Learned my lesson the first time. When you get out of these, you gotta come out before you stand up. Don't ignore the small details like this duct tape fix job and the cracked AC shroud. Those kind of things will come flying off on the highway. Ugh. This is pretty comfy up here. What happens when your belly's really big? It's a little tough. Oh, oh, imagine God. if it was this big. So times. <laughs> I had bunk beds in high school, so I feel like <laughs> I know how to live with it. Ooh, feel the vibration. That's a reverse right there. Let's see what, how it feels in reverse. But the roof looks clean. Did you get up there? I didn't get up there yet. Well, I'll get up there. It does have low. Ooh, that is hard to turn. No power steering. That's the hard part about this one. I mean, it the feels pretty good. The faster you go, the easier it is to steer. Right. But when you're stopped, it's like almost impossible. <laughs> this is how Frank gets buff arms yeah, driving right. this bad boy around. My shoulder's gonna burn. <laughs> So in terms of bones and cleanliness, this one is definitely very nice. Some projects that we could do to make it more efficient. Interior stuff, obviously the steering needs a little bit of perhaps lubrication. Oh, we, uh, we made it. Yeah, but it drives pretty well. Frank's still got to check under the hood. I mean, it says 15K or best offer. She's definitely a motivated seller. She wants to be living in Mexico. She's like already down there. She just came back for like a couple weeks for her daughter's wedding. So she wants to move it. So that could work in our favor. Maybe we could get this uh, sweet Sun Raider for a See, sweet uh, deal. Definitely slower than the other rig. Yeah. Yeah, than the, the second one that we've seen, the yeah. aerodynamic one. Pros and cons. I feel like all these old RVs are gonna, gonna have go. a lot of pros and cons. I'm gonna go. Yeah. I'm actually very There's impressed. No sound yeah, very impressed by Yeah, that guy just spent a lot of work on yeah. All right, so we've pulled over for lunch. We got to fuel up. We have one more to see, but what do you think the pros were of that Sun Raider? I think the, one of the biggest pros is the fact that it runs really, really good. Uh, it's ready to move in right now. There are some things that we're gonna wanna change and like replace and remake, uh, which I think is good because there's definitely potential to like make it even nicer mm -hmm. and more sellable. Mm -hmm. um, lower mileage, it has the 100,000 rather than the 150 or whatever that the other one had. the very first one, yeah. Um, so much cleaner than so the first one. So much cleaner. One. I will say that one huge advantage of the other one is that it has 33,000 miles. The mid, the, yeah, the Winnebago that yeah. we saw. But I will say, I didn't love the layout of the Winnebago as much in terms of it seems like the seats are where they are and so you'd have to like rip out seats mm -hmm. to change anything. Mm -hmm. The shower is kind of horrible in the Winnebago. Yeah. Like the slide out uh, I don't with love the floor black panels. Tanks. I don't love black tanks and it had black tanks in yeah, it. Yeah, whereas the Sun Raider has a nature's head. It does have a black tank availability. Sure. Uh, because there is two tanks on it. Right. Uh, everything well, we really could make well. the second black tank. We could just plumb the pee right into it. That's actually a really good idea. Yeah, and then you don't ever have to change your pee jug on your nature's head. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> but yeah, so we're gonna have lunch. We're gonna refuel up, and then we're gonna go see this last one. And we're definitely gonna buy something by the end of the day. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I like what we've seen so far. Yeah. Taco approved. All right, this next rig is a bit bigger than all the rest. <laughs> it doesn't even fit on the camera. So this is the biggest of all of them. It's a 27 foot, but it's also the newest of all of them. And it's still kind of in the same price range. Size absolutely matters. Consider what you would feel comfortable driving. This is as big as my New York City apartment. This is like where we lived before we left on our van life adventures. 
All the amenities are nice, but if the bones and the walls and the seals of the vehicle are having problems, that is such a big mess. This looks janky. Oh, there's some serious water damage up in this. Oh, is it? Right. So this is the kind of stuff that you're looking for in RVs. When there's like peeling and flaking and like, clearly that's water damage, which means that the water's broken the seal of the vehicle, which is very bad and super mm -hmm. hard to fix. This is like more. Yeah, around the windows. Like around the windows spots. is pretty janky. And then around this window here, super jank. Like you can tell, like it's like peeling away. So there's definitely a couple spots in here that we would have to like rip down stuff and maybe go behind the walls. So I don't know if that's what we want to do. Like that's kind of a lot for us. It might be a project for somebody else though. Full carpet all the way to the toilet feels aggressive. Super aggressive. This is what how they built them back then though. You got a full. There's bed even like back a partition here. here. Ooh, this bed is chate. Chate. Ooh. All right. I yeah, think, I, th I think we've seen enough. Yeah, let's go. Okay. And Kyle's Ooh. Alex feeling? How you feeling? I feel great. Thank you, buddy. We're gonna go have some celebratory dinner afterwards. All right. <laughs> We're on our way right now to buy one of the vehicles that we saw today. Let us know in the comments below which one you think we got, and you'll have to stay tuned till next week. We know that we could definitely count out the fourth one. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure to hit that subscribe button. A huge thank you to all of our Patreons for helping us get through these big changes. May or may not have just made a very impulsive decision. A $9,000 impulsive decision. Ah, we are currently the proud owners of a